Lately I've been really impressed by Timo Hoagland's live coding patch, which he put on Gumroad, and while I'm still leaning on him to assemble a nice video tutorial for it, it sparked an exploration of how an efficient live coding shell could be set up with node for max Node.js already has a lot of the requirements covered, so we're going to take a deeper look at this. First, a definition. I'm going to talk about a so-called REPL. It's short for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop, and it's nothing else than a sort of built-in shell for a programming runtime. PHP has one, Ruby has one, Elixir has one, and of course, Node does so too. Let's take a look. We open a terminal and type Node, after which we are greeted by a prompt. We can now read in any valid JavaScript expression, which it will evaluate and then print. When it is finished, it will loop over and present you a prompt again. Now the thing is, Node will actually let you extend its built-in REPL if you like, but we will actually take a step back and do a more low-level implementation using readline. The reasons for this choice will become clear in the next episode. Before we even consider opening Max, let's just build a pseudo shell from scratch. We start with an empty npm project by typing npm init y. The dash y flag skips all questions asked in the init process. We create a file called repl server.js and first of all require the readline module. We then create an interface with readline.create interface and define the std in and std out streams as input and output. If you're not familiar with these terms, let's simplify things by saying std in is your keyword and std out is your screen. Afterwards, we prompt for input. Let's give this a go. So here's the prompt. We can input things, but nothing happens. Unsurprisingly, because we haven't yet coded any logic. Next, we need to listen for an event that's called by the runtime on the readline interface whenever the user presses enter. This is the line event, and here we get the actual input passed in as a parameter. We will look at this in a second. Let's just also chain the close event on this and issue a friendly goodbye message when the user closes the REPL. In the line event, we just echo the input back. So that works. After the first prompt, we just don't get a second opportunity to input something. So after echoing the input, we issue another rl.prompt. Here's the first prompt and there is the second. Great. When we start a max patch with a node script object that references our REPL server.js, keep in mind that we haven't even yet included the max API in our JavaScript. Instead, if we prepend our messages to the node object with std in, it will simply be passed to the std in of the underlying JavaScript code. I find this a really neat move of the developers of NodeScript because it ultimately helps loosen the coupling between Max and the JavaScript code, meaning you can take any project that accepts input at std in and outputs at std out or std error and plug it into Max. The way we obtain the output is via the right outlet of node script, where it says dump out, std out, and std error. So if you patch a route object in sequence, we get the REPL's output here. Fine. Now let's take this a step further and make it more shell-like.
we could append the output to a text edit object by formatting the output as append percent %s with a sprintf object. If we connect that to the text edit, we can already see the output coming in, only that there's no new line appended. To fix this, I'm going to manually trigger a new line by sending 13 into an i2a object. I wasn't able to do this uh, with the sprintf. If you know of a way, please reach out to me. Now we're going to duplicate this text edit and use it as the actual command line. If you configure it to output its text on enter, which I did earlier in the inspector, you will get its contents prepended by text on the left outlet. So route text and on into the studio in. There's one more little tweak we have to make here. In order to clear its contents and reset the cursor after you have hit enter, we have to trigger a clear and select message afterwards. All right, seems to work. Finally, let's make the output a little more useful. We're going to exchange the simple echoing logic by a JavaScript evaluator. For that, we're going to write a try catch block because when a user inputs some garbage, we don't want the entire script to crash. So on input, we call the eval function, which is usually considered dangerous because it will readily execute any JavaScript you pass it. In our sandbox environment here though, it will be okay. When an error occurs, we just output that in our catch block, but the script will keep running. Because we haven't up till now required the max API, we can just test this in the terminal. 1 plus 1 equals 2. This is today's date, and here's a random float number. If we input some garbage, it tells us so, but still waits for input. Great. Back in the max patch, we confirm that it's working there too. I'll leave you here with your own imagination of where this can lead, what applications it might have. We'll look at another usability tweak in the next episode.